My name is Vahid Chitza, I'm part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, and I know you're an extremely busy man, so I appreciate that. Go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody and let us know where you're coming in from. Great. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me. My name is Thomas DeShooter, and uh, I live on an island just off the coast of Vancouver in the Pacific Ocean, so I'm coming to you live from Nanaimo uh, in my home office and my home studio. And I've spent the last two decades of my life working in the financial services industry as an investment advisor, insurance advisor, and now a money coach and profit first professional. Ooh, my favorite topic, my favorite topic. I was teaching, <laughs> it's so funny. I was teaching, uh, I got to share with this with you. So I sat down with a doctor, with a physician, and this individual does very well in his practice and he's got a couple of patents under his name he's done a lot of different things so he's way very versed so we sat down and i said do you know about compound interest he goes well i have heard of it i said it's probably the most important rule applied to money you just have heard of it so i thought he was messing with me so i was like listen let me tell you how it works this this we go through it and i think he's like 60 65 years old it's like wow this is amazing I should have known this stuff. Where were you 20 years ago? I was like, please tell me you're joking with me. Tell me you know this stuff. You got things patent under your name. You got to know compound interest. So anyway, that was it. I could go into details. It, it was a funny, hilarious, interesting, and educational session for me personally. That's great. You know, it's funny because uh, when you think, You know, having been in the industry as long as I have and worked with so many business owners and individuals and families, you think when you see people that are doing well that they have it all figured out. And in a lot of cases, they don't. They, they, they know what they do and they do that very well. And that's probably why they're successful is because they have such great focus. But the peripheral stuff, you know, the stuff that I might do with somebody that's, you know, like compound interest, like, like the simple rule of 72, right? You know, divide your rate of return into 72, and that tells you how many years it will take you to double your money. So if you're getting a 6% return, 12 years before you double your money, right? And that, like those kind of principles, people aren't really top of mind of, especially when they're successful business owners. They're usually driven at their business. And this other stuff, like what you just talked about, compound interest, becomes a concept that they're foreign to. I agree with that 100%. It's so interesting that you said you, you hit it in the net. They're focused at what they do, and they know that. And my other response to that is they know how to make money, but then you need a coach to tell you what to do with your money. It's not just making it. So, I listen, we could go into that topic all day long. Um, it's, it's a very fascinating world how from outside, just like you said, we think they got it all together. But actually, those people need the most amount of help because they're the thought leaders. They're, these are the influencers. They, a lot of other people are coming to them for wisdom. And if they don't know it, it creates a lot of uh, friction. So let's dive into Thinking Go Rich. How long have you been reading Thinking Go Rich and Dr. Hill's Principles? I yeah. know you're friends with a lot of people that read Thinking Go Rich. I saw in your post, and I saw a lot of my favorite authors liking your post. So they already know that I'm doing a live session with you. Great. Um, yeah, you know what? I first read Think and Grow Rich in 2011. So, you know, it, it only came across my, my peripheral at that point. I've read it uh, four times since then. I've had mastermind sessions on it with uh, a group of friends of mine. And we actually have a, a group uh, called Being Man. It's a men's group where we get to be vulnerable with one another. But once a week, we mastermind on principles and ideas around growing our business, uh, how we reflect on our lives, how we are as husbands, uh, lovers, parents, etc. cetera. And, uh, and it all spawned from reading Think and Grow Rich. When I think back to that book, where I am today, not only in uh, my business, my personal life, but my, but my own consciousness was really transformed at that moment when I read that book and realized how much control over my thinking I had and what a difference that would make in my life. I agree with that. So what are some of the principles that you think are like monumental? Everybody should know. Well, first of all, that uh, 
you know, I don't think he sums it up this way in Napoleon Hill, but basically we are our thoughts and our, and our own thinking. You know, how we think determines everything about our life and what we end up producing in our lives and what we end up projecting outward. And so I've become uh, a true gatekeeper of my own thought process. That to me is the number one principle that I took away that if I work on my thinking, if I work on my subconscious, if I work on designing how I want to perceive the world, then I get to create my world. That's what, it, that's what my biggest takeaway from the book is, is that I have the power to create in my life that which I think about the most. And, you know, what that's taken me to is that the universe, in the world of universal laws and principles, the universe doesn't know a good idea from a bad idea. It just is going to show up with exactly what you're focused on, regardless of whether it's good for you or bad for you, it's going to show up that way. And my example around money is that if you're always saying, hey, I don't have any money, I can't afford this, that's too expensive, yada, 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 that's what's going to show up in your life. You're going to, you're going to be a self-prophesizing human being. You're not going to have enough money, you're not going to be able to afford things, and you're not going to be doing the things you want in life because you've created that own stopgap in your thinking. I agree with that. And you constantly put that in universe. I told a couple of my buddies, don't say I'm sick. Don't say I have a headache. Don't say I'm about to catch cold. Don't, just eliminate all of those vocabularies. Don't even think about it. You might think about it, but just don't, don't add on top of it. Put your voice on it and your intention and put it in the universe. So I agree with that 100%. So here's my question. What did you feel the first time? Because the first time I read that, I thought it was a crazy idea. I was like, your thoughts could become things. To me, it was like play on words. I was like, what the heck does this mean? It's like completely different language that I was used to conversating with people. And maybe it's my own fault that I didn't have anybody around me, surrounding me, that had read the book before. So when I read it the first time, I'm like, what is this guy smoking? He's like, what are you talking about? What is success has to do with sex? Like, what the heck are you talking about? You know? I was totally confused on the faith side. I was like, is he Christian? Is he Catholic? Is he Jew? Is he Muslim? Like, what is he? Like, let's get to the point. Which religion is better for success? And he never talked about it. So a lot of this stuff that people read initially, it's like crazy. You never heard of it. So how was your reaction? And I never, I never knew the word mastermind till 2008 or nine. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Not in school, not in university. And nowhere. I was like, mastermind. What, what the hell is that? The mind doesn't have a master. What are you talking about? So I don't know. I don't know if you felt the same way. Well, I'll tell you, when I first read it, uh, I was a bit in awe of the principle. But what I had seen when I reflected on, on the things in my life that I had achieved. So, for example, prior to my current career, I was a rock musician. I was a drummer. And I had set out to make records and tour before the age of 30. That's what I had set out to do was I wanted to, you know, back then they were called records. Uh, mm -hmm. And I achieved that. I managed to self-produce and publish two CDs and go on, on several tours across Canada with my band. And I achieved that. And so when I read the book and I got that principle of, you know, we our thoughts are our things, I had my own proof where I, I was so persistent on being a musician and 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 creating that in my life that that's all I thought about and guess what I achieved that now I didn't take it to the level that I had wanted to on a financial and success level and that's you know that's a whole bunch of other stuff that I got in my own way if you will but I saw that I had done something that I wanted to achieve so I had a real easy time accepting the principle that how I think will determine my outcomes. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to have uh, those rocky roads. You know, I look at it this way. When I have an idea that's bigger than me and I want to go out and accomplish it, the universe is going to test me. How determined am I and how willing am I to do what's necessary in order to achieve my goal? So it's never going to be an easy pathway. It's always going to have its you know, ceilings that I'm going to run into. And the question becomes, can I 
break through that next ceiling in order to move forward or am I going to be stopped? And that's the test that's always going to happen no matter what it is. Anytime you're up to creating great things in the world, you are going to be tested as to how much you're willing to put into it. And if you have a stop gap, then you're going to stop. And that's the way it's going to be. And it'll be an attempt. And maybe that fuels you for the next great idea that you have that comes along. And now that's the one that you're able to push to keep pushing forward through all of the ceilings that you're going to hit. I agree with that. Temporary defeat is the biggest killer of, uh, for, for, for people that don't become successful. I think it's a disease that we all have that's just lingering around and it just kind of sneaks in. And that's where you were talking about the challenges that come. So here's my question. How do you know when your idea is shit and you need to drop it? Oh, that's, uh... I could be doing the wrong thing and just be persistent, but that is not my future. So how do you determine that? Because I've had those ideas where after a year or two, I was like, okay, this got to go. This ain't happening. How do you determine that? Um, so here's how, here's, how I, here's how I look at that is that I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas. Um, what I've what works for me, and I can only I can only reflect on what works for me is I start every day pretty much the same way, and I meditate every morning, and I have an agreement. I have something called a chief spiritual officer, my CSO of my life, and I go to my chief spiritual officer with these questions. And I get out of my head, because the head, you know, the head's a great place to bring stuff into. But when you start relying on analysis all the time, it will lead you wrong, in my view. So I take it down to my belly, if you will, to that feeling internally. And, I, and I, when I think back to when I was a musician, when I was truly connected to source, if you will, or to my gift of playing, I never thought. I reacted from my feelings in the moment versus thinking about what I was going to play. And every time I went into my head and start thinking about it, that's when the next mistake would come when I was playing. And as soon as I left my head and just allowed myself to be in the flow of playing with other musicians, that's when the gift showed up and the greatest creation came along musically. So I've been able to look at that and, and adopt that into where I am today, that if it feels really good, if I can get out of my head and get a really great feeling about what I'm doing and the purpose I'm out to create, then I know I'm on the right path. And if I can't get that feeling and it's all thought, then I start questioning whether this is the right path for me or if this is the right generation of the idea. Yeah, because sometimes it takes like, 5, 10, 20, 30 years to become an overnight success. So those individuals go through a lot of turbulences and the valleys of the life before they become successful. So it's, uh, it's definitely, I agree with that. But sometimes some ideas need to go and to be able to be replaced with a greater ideas and what the universe wants to bring you. So you said your wife, uh, my wife told me to stop coming up with new ideas. So if that hasn't happened for you, your wife is really good. So mindset, stop it no more. You have enough for a lifetime, no more ideas. So <laughs> well, I kind of look at it this way. She sort of lets me go around the block, right? Like, cool. here's the thing is, is like, even when, uh, and for me, everything comes back to being in a band. Like being in a band was, the, was one of the greatest teachers I ever had for where I am today as a business person, as a, as a parent. As, and as a husband, is, be, is that lesson of being in a band. Sometimes you start writing a song and you're, you, you start adding and taking and you start adding and going, what I call going around the block with it, right? You just keep adding and adding and adding. And then, and then you end up start taking away. And sometimes you end up right back to where you started with the original idea. But you needed to go through the process of trying other things with it in order to get back to, you know what, the best version of this is the first version we came up with. But as a creative person, it's always, it, it's always normal in my view to want to you know, expand on that idea till you get to the point where you're like, no, this is not working. I just need to go back to the first building block and take that and go forward with it. So I, I think going around the block with something is a really good idea. Like it, there's nothing the matter with that. 
And it usually means that your 30 years is the overnight success, right? Because you've, you've tried iterations of an idea to get it to the point where it's, it's that great baby of yours that's going to spawn something. Based on your, my last question, I know your time is very valuable, but if somebody has not read the book, Thinking Go Rich, in your personal opinion and a professional opinion, why should people read Thinking Go Rich? Well, first of all, it's, it's a difference in thinking. It talks about the ability to actually allow yourself to feel your thoughts and not just be constantly in your head around ideas. And so if you don't have that principle, if you don't have that understanding, here is a, you know, a, a group of lessons from somebody who interviewed hundreds and hundreds of successful and unsuccessful people in order to come up with a strategy that actually has worked and fueled almost all success. If you think about Amazon and the creation uh, that Jeff Bezos has done with Amazon, it comes from his own thinking on the idea and belief in his ability to do something. And so if you don't have that ability or if you're not quite certain that you have all the tools that you need, I think reading this book would, would allow you the grace to start trusting yourself and your own intuition. I love it. I love it. Somebody else asked, what else do you read? I tell them thinking go rich only, but what, is your, what, what else would you recommend them to read? Uh, well, I actually just met, I just read um, uh, Your Money or Your Life. Uh, which was a uh, which was a really great book and a, and a strategy and uh, you know I wrote a book a few years ago a few year, years ago called Bloom Your Money Your Life, which is about money. So if you're looking for some finance, I'd say Your Money Your Life has just has been a game changer right now. Uh, habits, um, uh, Atomic Habits are two books I've recently read as well. Uh, you know I, I read a lot of stuff. I'm also um, on the path of becoming uh, a minister with Unity Worldwide Ministries. So I have been reading an absolute ton of stuff from uh, Charles Fillmore on uh, the power of divine mind and subconscious. And so it really supports a lot of what is what no Napoleon Hill wrote in Think and Grow Rich. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, an, I'm an, avid, an avid reader. Um, I'm either have an audio book playing when I'm walking or driving or I'm reading when I'm at home and... Uh, you know, there's when I ask that question, so many books come to mind, I almost can't find one, right? <laughs> the, the, I think the whole point is start reading. Doesn't matter what you're reading. I don't think there are any bad books out there. There's some books that are better than others, but I don't think there's any bad book. I think you need to start reading. Most people need to start reading. Average American reads less than a book per year. Wow, that was me that's at one point. Crazy that is. Even in today's technology, that's crazy. With Audible, YouTube, all of this stuff, you just gotta you gotta start brainwashing yourself for success. So I agree with that. Listen, I appreciate you taking your time and being with us. I would definitely love for us to you know collaborate in any level. If there's anything that I could do for your team or yourself, let us know. We would definitely love to contribute back. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for, Thank uh, you so much for having me on your show today. I appreciate it. You got it. Take care. Bye bye. All right, cheers.